Hello guys and welcome back to TNT Madness. Today we are going to be looking at a 230 sand compressor. And this thing is really massive and quite complex, but compared to really any other sand stacker that stacks 230 sand or roundabout, this thing is actually really tiny. It's just quite a bit more complicated because there is a lot more redstone mechanics acting on here, like variable redstone outputs for cauldrons and all sorts of stuff and it's all done in a really really tight space so it may look quite complex but when we actually get to the tutorial it should be fine but this thing is really really useful because it is really only used though for the really top tier cannons your 231 shot your 230 Nuker, your 231 shot nuker, even just a normal 230 cannon. Just really any cannon that you want to stack around 230 sand. Even if you want to stand, stack something like 200 sand, that's fine. And if you want to use this for a 240 reverse, then you can, because this thing can actually stack 240, so you can use that for your reverse cannon if you want to too. So this thing is really used for your top tier cannons, your massive cannons, just if you have some sort of space constraints, then you really can't go wrong with this because it's really reliable and it just gets the job done really, really well compared with anything else. So if you're going to build some sort of sand compressor, it is normally one of the largest bits of the cannon. This is quite a compact and just a great way to go when you're building cannons. So let's actually have a look at this thing in action. So now on to firing this, what we have is our sand compressor and a cobweb here, and the reason this is here is because you have your main barrel bit here on your cannon, and then this will be the little part where you have your piston where it pushes into the middle part, which if you've built a massive cannon, one stand bit. For reference, uh, another reference, um, this will happen when I finish building my 231 shot, you'll be able to look at that, and this will be using the same sand stacker. So depending on what point in time you're watching this, that may or may not be out. So anyway, if we come over here and press this button, this will retract the double piston extender and all the sand will fall down into this barrel bit. This piston will extend, then it'll push back, and then all you can see is it fires into this giant block here. I have tested this with a hammer to make sure that's actually 230 sand in here, that none of it broke actually on the slabs, and none of it did. So all of it goes into this little bit here, and if you're wondering if a little bit sticking out matters, it honestly doesn't because you're going to be pushing this out, no TNT is going to be firing off that will, it, that will affect the position of the sand when you actually fire it. So it should be 100% fine, and there's a little add-on you can add to the back here that will allow you to close off the actual barrel, so that way when you do fire it, it doesn't interfere with anything. So that's how this works, and it's really, really cool, and as you can see, quite a lot of stuff happens in one point. So the first thing that happens is this retracts, then all the TNT fires out and it goes around the back and it will act pulse these pistons so it goes up that way and then it'll weigh another wee while and then these pistons will push back and then the TNT will explode and it'll fire it way over here. There's actually a lot more happening than it looks so anyway let's get on now with the redstone. So now on to the redstone but before we do that if you want to download this world you can it will be the first link in the description below and then you can just import that into your world test it out have a look at the redstone pick it apart whatever you want to do with it you can download it will be there in the description below that's just in case really if you don't if you want to test it out before you actually build it or if you're planning a raid or something you're making a cannon or something it really doesn't matter it's just the download is there. So anyway, there is a lot going on with this cannon, and it's probably just a very good idea to start from the actual start, which is this button. So as soon as you press the button, it will retract the sticky piston, which will bring the redstone block back here, which will in turn turn off all of this redstone. And what happens here is this is a double piston extender, and if you don't know what that is, it essentially is just a piston extender that extends two times, which is very, very, very basic. And all this happens to do is what this will do is it'll we this one will turn off first, so it'll retract this piston up top, and then it'll retract this piston at the bottom. And this essentially happens simultaneously, so all the sand falls together. And then when it retracts this piston, or when it extends, this piston will activate, this piston at the back will activate, and then this one tick later, this piston will activate because the redstone here, and it's being bud powered because there is a block here. And you don't need to know what bud powering is to understand how this works, it just means that this piston will be powered. So that's how that happens, so that means all the sand will be falling down there. And thanks to this huge stack of sand, which can be 230 or 240, this is actually 240, 
you're going to need a massive delay. So the first thing that happens is this redstone torch goes off, which then goes around the back here, under the very top bit of the cannon, which you can see down here in this dispenser bit. Goes all the way along here, turns off this redstone, and activates the sticky piston here, which goes into a water cauldron. And the reason we need a water cauldron is there's no other way that I could find to send a signal down here that would, wouldn't affect everything else. Because a uh, water cauldron is a variable redstone output, so when it moves, nothing else activates unless you have a comparator. Which is this thing here, which then goes into this redstone torch thing, which has one on the top side and very edge here, and what that does is it will activate this one and this one, which will activate these two dispensers here, and then we'll activate this one simultaneously, and then we've just got a little slab staircase that goes up to the top, so all of these dispensers activate simultaneously, so all the TNT will explode at once down at the very bottom of the water. So after that, we have now got another massive delay that goes all the way along here into this block down here, and then all the way along here. So at this point, it will then split off and go off into this direction, which has quite a lot of delay, but a lot of things happen before that. Those pistons over there activate. So we need to pulse this piston over here. So we have this going all the way. We have this going all the way up here, which will then activate this piston, which will push all the sand over there. And then we have a slab staircase, which pushes the redstone going up the side here. You, this doesn't have to be a slab. But it then goes into this monostable circuit, which is also this one, so that way it can pulse, but this one only activates one tick. And then this pushes this up for one tick, and the reason we need this to activate for only one tick is so that this can retract. And this activates one tick because when we activate this, if I actually shot off, which it won't because then it'll break it, but it'll push the sand up and then it'll go down very quickly, and since this is a constant output, it'll then go up to this and actually just re-extend it because it'll be here. Because sticky pistons, when they are activated one tick, they don't actually retract the block, which is wonderful. And the only reason this is activated, because I couldn't fit anything else here, that of course wouldn't affect anything else. Except maybe a redstone block, but I thought this would just be a little bit cheaper. And that's just a furnace with a piece of redstone in it. You can put really anything in it. It can be a dispenser. And then you just have a comparator which will then output it. So then, that, like I said, these pistons will then activate. But then we have this line of redstone that goes underneath. Then goes up to the back here which activates all these pistons over here which will then extend. And then this thing is optional. But this goes all the way along here. And then after everything is fired... This will push the piston into this block here, so it creates a complete barrel. Uh, this top block up the top here is an actual activated because if we do have a block up the top here, it will activate this piston here too early or too late or a lot of things actually because it will activate this bottom piston, this piston along here because this powers, bud powers the block here, so then it will activate it and block the barrel and then the sand will just stack and break on the slabs, which isn't fun. But that's essentially how this thing works. And also the reason there are five spaces here is because you have to set up this to your timing because it's not a constant signal. It's only activated for like eight ticks. So this will extend, your cannon will fire off, then it will retract. So that's just because we cannot take a mat a long enough signal from up here like we did in the other 80 stacker without using tons of repeaters. So this is just a much simpler way and for something that's optional, I didn't really want to go overboard. So that's how this thing works. It's really... It's moderately complex, it's just because there's a lot happening, and a lot of things have to be a lot more compact to actually happen in the small space. So anyway, now on to the tutorial. So now on to the tutorial, what you're going to need is a 7x11 area, and the diamond represents the very front end, so it's technically 7x10, but that's going to be the very edge of your actual barrel from your cannon, and you're going to have a tiny bit of redstone if you're going to have the bit that closes off the barrel. So what else you're going to need is this gold bit here represents the actual middle part of the barrel with this gold bit representing where all the sand is going to be going and these two bits representing where the TNT and the water is. So there's quite a few resources that you're going to need and what you're going to need is some building blocks, some slabs, some redstone, some redstone repeaters, six redstone torches, 17 dispensers, 33 pistons, three sticky pistons, a button, doesn't matter what button, two comparators, a furnace, doesn't have to be a furnace as long as it gets a comparator output, a block of redstone, a water bucket, and of course you're going to need some sand for the monostable circuits, and just of course you need sand to actually make the sand compressor, as well as some cobwebs and TNT. 
So the first thing we are going to be doing is building the main barrel of the actual compressor and the first thing you want to do is raise it a block off the ground from the very bottom so you're at Y230 then you want to place slabs down on top of those blocks so it's a 2 by 6 area then you want to come to the back here and place down some temporary blocks you want to place two high dispensers along the back like so then you want to go up again and place a set of dispensers that are in a circle like so but this time facing all round then you want to go up leave one air block place two dispensers along here you want to make a full circle except you want on the very far side along here which we'll get to you want to leave a space open on the bottom so that way the actual repeater when it goes over to the other side of the compressor can actually go through so that's going to be your main bit there so all you want to do now is cover up these empty spots here so you can actually place down your water but before we do that we're going to just leave a giant area along here so we can we are going to bring it up to there and we are just going to place some ladders along here which will help you maneuver in and out of your cannon and it's just nice to have it there after that you can then place some blocks along here and now we are going to actually be placing down the pistons so what you want to do is you want to go over here and place one one by six row along on this side so it'll be six here and then on the other side you want to then go ahead and place a two by six area of pistons so you just want to go along like this, make sure it's 2x6 and it should look something like this. So now after you've done that, you then want to place blocks on top of here like so. And we're just going to be placing the actual pistons for your double piston extender. So you just want to place some temporary blocks and then place two pistons in front of each other like so. And then if you really want to, you can actually leave this bit behind it. Except you will want to place your dispenser or whatever it is in here with some sort of item inside that's just for future reference and then this is pretty much your main barrel done because this will then extend all the way over here and as you can see that's quite a lot so now we are going to be building the start mechanism and if you are going to be building the rest of your cannon if you're building your own custom one you can actually take the output from way over there so you don't have to bring a thing that goes around the back here so it's just easier if you are actually building your cannon but the next thing you want to do is you want to go up two blocks and then go along to left by three then you want to place your wooden button which is then three blocks from the very back dispenser here and then after that you want to get a sticky piston place it underneath place a redstone block along the side here and then you want to then place redstone all the way along here and then you want to place blocks on top of these pistons here followed by a piece of you actually want to place a block here with redstone on top here with a redstone appears set to one tick delay and then more redstone going along here so this will activate all of these the next thing you want to do is then place a redstone torch on the side here place down a block there and then you just want to bring a trail going all the way along to the side here and up to this point here so after you've done that you then want to place down four four tick delay repeaters that go all the way along to the back here and then you want to then attach it to this block here so for the next part what you want to do is you can just go ahead and go along here and place down your redstone because for here you then want to place a upside down half slab because if you don't then the redstone that goes along and inputs into here will one either connect up to this one and then affect everything or it will just destroy everything so after what you want to do is you then want to place a block on top of this so that doesn't interfere and what I mean by that is if this was a solar block it would activate this piston here and then this will become a perpetual loop which is something you do not want so after you've done that you want to place a cauldron fill it up with water then place a block down the bottom here and you want to grab your comparator and you want that to face into this block here which is going to be another block then you want to place a redstone torch on every side except the very back side here and then you want to place a block on the very top of this and another block here and here and then bring redstone all the way along here so it activates all these dispensers and you want to place a upside down half slab here and here and you can place block either here or here and then you just want to place redstone on top of all of these and then go around here and then place redstone on top of all of these dispensers so it activates all these and do not for the life of me fill up any of these dispensers with TNT until you've completely finished so now we're going to be bringing the signal along so what you want to do is you want to go down here place a piece of redstone then go along four blocks place a block up here like so and then go along and place two redstone pieces set to four text lay here piece of redstone on the ground then you want to place four more redstone pieces going all the way along here and then connect it up here so this is just a really long 
repeater signal. The other way that you can make this is you can bring this up by one block and then go ahead and place a block along here, place redstone there, go four redstone repeaters along here. And this is just a slightly more elegant way of making it. It doesn't really matter which way you do it, it's just a way that you can do it. So now what you want to do is place a block here of redstone on top, then you want to drill a hole underneath here and place four redstone on pairs with the N1 being two ticks delay, then you want to place all them along here. Then you want to go around the back here and find where this connected and place a block here with a redstone torch on the back and then a redstone torch on the top side here. So after this you can then bring along your signal that goes all the way along here and your piston that goes along the front here and of course you want to make it so that this area here is covered up and then you can then go ahead and figure out which actual length is fine for you but to start off with you can just set it to a maximum of or a minimum of eight ticks like so doesn't really matter you have to figure that out with some tinkering so now we're going to be attaching it to these pistons so place down blocks along here with redstone on top of them like so then you want to place a redstone repeater here set to four ticks lay with a block on top and a redstone there and then you want to place a piston here with red with either sand on top or a sticky piston with a solid block on top just so it creates a mono stable circuit then after that you want to place a four tick repeater here and then you want to place redstone on top of this block like so. After that you then can bring a place a block here, place redstone on top of that, make sure there's a block on top of here so it doesn't interfere with the rest of the redstone. Then you want to place an uh, upside down piston here with redstone with another sand on top so that way this creates into a mono stable circuit too. So now we're going to place a block here with a redstone peter set to one tick delay with again another upside down facing piston with sand on top. Then you want to place a block here with a comparator here. Make sure you have a redstone output by placing your dispenser or furnace or something with an item in it so it can turn on the comparator. After that you want to place a block here with a redstone repeater on the back like so. Then you just want to place redstone on top so whenever this activates it will go over here. And one good idea to do this is you want to position your redstone block in here when you actually start. So now we are finished, all we have to do now is place down sand along here, then stack it up by 19 or by how many high you want it to and just make sure it's 230. To recommend to do this I'd stack this 20 high and then make a platform around it so that way you can actually stack sand up there because no doubt you probably have a group building this so you can have some guy at the very top placing down the sand. And then next thing you want to do every time you actually load this thing, you want to make sure you have 12 cobwebs in total that are all along this side here where you have the pistons. So as you can see there will be 12 cobwebs up here, and then you have your sand so that way it will fall into the cobwebs, this will push it over here, this will push it over here, then it will shoot it into your actual cannon. So also you want to make sure that now you can actually fill up your dispenser with TNT, however you want to do it. So, yeah, you finished your cannon. So, anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please leave a like. But, anyway, goodbye from TNT Madness. <laughs>